the county park commissioner for about 25 years, and I've been a mayor and a councilman for 16 years, retired. Um, uh, my question for, uh, for, for T&M is a couple. Um, when th this, this scenario that you've laid out of the subdivision, uh, aren't there other jurisdictions that T&M does work for, like Atlantic Highlands, where uh, other, other methods of accomplishing the same goal have, have happened? Do you know of something specific? Are you, are you, are TNM's the harbor, harbor uh, engineers for Atlantic Islands, correct? Correct, I was not directly involved in that project. Well, well, that, that project, which has gone on for the same thing and had some of the same uh, Green Acres uh, issues come up, you know, that's a, that's a harbor that contains a uh, senior center, a ferry, two restaurants, multiple parks, boating launch, uh, fishing pier, uh, and lots of parks. The entire harbor <coughs> is on the Rossi and has been for a long time. Uh, the DEP, uh, years ago, uh, raised an issue when a tennis court was being renovated that they wanted to come in and sort of uh, take over the, the, the harbor, you know. And it was, it was, and the way it was resolved was we hired uh, Gene Iadanza, I think he's a judge now, went down to Trenton, I went with them, and in about a half hour, we met with the commissioner and assistant commissioner, and it was worked out. So now that entire parcel is still on the Rossi, which protects it from a couple things. It protects it from builder's remedy, of course, because we always have developers coming in, I'm sure Red Bank does as well, for Mount Laurel Housing. And the second thing it does, uh, it, uh, it's first come, first serves. And, and ha are you familiar with that at all? I'm, I know the Atlantic Highlands Harbor it, it, Commission project, but I was not directly involved in it at all. Are, are you, did you? If, 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 if I could, and yeah. I appreciate the comments, but if we could keep them to a question at this point. Well, my question is, aren't there other alternate methods of doing this short of, of taking right. taking this property off the Rossi? That's the, that's the question. And the answer is, the answer is we've asked. We've met with them and we've asked, and they've said no. We went down there with all our documents and laid them out, and they said, this is the process. I would suggest And, and, would suggest and again, we're, we're talking about specific properties in specific locations that were purchased for specific purposes. And all we're talking about is this parking thing. That's all we're talking about. I, I'm, I'm, just, I'm just asking the TNM engineer where, where that they, she should be talking to the people that are sitting next to her to find out if it's in other towns. Uh, you've got Victory Park in, in Rumson. They came up with a creative way to do this. You've got Seabright. I'm not sure exactly how Seabright does it, but you've got uh, but you've got many methods short of taking the property it. off the Rossi. The goal is to keep it on the Rossi. That's the, that should be the goal. But you're making, you're making statements and assumptions that those properties either had the restrictions that worked in that or don't have the restrictions. We don't know that. You don't know the that for a fact. Talking, the properties I'm talking about? No, Rumson. You don't. We don't know that. Well, Rumson did it. They may still they have. They, they may have the reason. Yeah. I, they, they did it by rejoining the lot line. And they may not. They, they may not have parking. I'm talking spaces. about Atlantic Islands. I know several parcels in Atlantic Islands that were worked out in other methods in this because of situations that you mentioned. In other words, people park at the restaurant at night, but in the daytime the fishermen are there, and, and the basketball players are there. So there's and again, and there's seasonal and, issues. And again, you're making statements. We have a, a we have another property that was subject of this late, latest letter, which is more complicated, which did get Green Acres money. They want us to enforce the parking restriction there, which will affect businesses. It's very similar to I think what you're suggesting. I'm, and I'm we on Marine Park. I understand. Okay. Right, and and we intend to go and meet with them and see what the options are and say that this is unreasonable. You have to go. But meet. that's not the subject of this here. Look, if you have to go meet with the governor and Krillos and your senators, you don't get it done that way. Doing it this way just that's builds distrust in the community. Unfortunately, the other thing about the Rossi, there's no resolution. Is there a resolution required for the Rossi by a governing body? Yes. It, it's required. I, what ta what you, you're, 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 you're engineers from Middletown, do you have a resolution from Middletown for their Rossi? You're, you're our engineers in, in Atlantic Highlands. There's no, there's no requirement for resolution. It's signed by, executive, by the executive of the, of the office. You get a new mayor in, Cindy runs for mayor, she can put it on the Rossi, and that'll be it again. 
But the, the, the map gets filed and the map... The map gets filed it's and it's signed by the mayor. I've signed it. But there's no resolution. Uh, we've done resolutions. It's not, it's not required. required. It might not be required, but we've always Wait, wait, in all due respect, in all due respect, I didn't say it was required or not. Right. I said that we went through, and in comparing what the ordinance stated for the purchase of the properties versus the Rossi, I had an ordinance in action of the council with regard to the purchase of the property. I did not have actions of the full council replacement of the Rossi. I didn't say it was required or not. I'm just saying of the documents I searched, resolutions, ordinances, there were none to put on the Rossi, but there was an ordinance, there was an ordinance with a public hearing to purchase the property. And the stated purpose of the purchase of the property was for the library. I'm just That's, that was what I was I'm saying. Just, I'm just saying I'm not aware of the need for a resolution or a requirement of resolution. If Red Bank has a resolution, they should provide it for well, the parks they do have on, on the roster. Under NJAC 7 colon 36 dash 25.3, if you go down to, I guess, uh, 4 double I, it talks about the local government unit adopting an ordinance or resolution specifically including the property on the Rossi. Is that part of the master plan? No, no, no. I'm reading. This is um, NJAC. This is the um, Recreation Open Space Inventory. Oh. I mean, I'm Possibly it's not enforced, but Red Bank doesn't have it. I don't think Atlanta Commons has one. Oops. No, oops, maybe. But, yeah, uh, I don't know. We, our last <laughs> amendment we adopted by resolution. And, and this particular parcel was not included? No, this particular parcel has been on the open space in that, that, okay. quite some time in error. Don't a lot of properties, I don't don't a lot of properties uh, uh, move on to the Rossi after initially being purchased or uh, re gotten through um, failure pay taxes or that the townships, they put them on the Rossi? Yes. Right. So, so properties change. So, what's to say that this didn't change? Someone somewhere signed that, put it on the Rossi. You're saying it was an error, but whoever signed it, they signed it. Right. Why don't you go through? If you want to go through, why don't you go through the diversion process? It's just as easy as this. I've gone through three or four of them. Well, this this is a subcategory instead of the diversion process. So, based on the amount of information you have in your favor or against you. Uh, what, whichever it may be, Green Acres tells you which what level of standard you have to be held to and what the process is. The process for this public hearing is we had to give a 30-day notice in the paper, we had to put up signs, we had to do a 15-day notice, we had to do the 200-foot property listing, we had to hold this meeting. These are the standards of what Green Acres And they recommended, you, 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 they recommended this they process us, as being the most expedient. They sent us the rules and regulations and said these are the steps to follow. I, I question whether it's the most expedient way because you could have gone through a diversion and you could have used the revenues from the parking meters as the compensation for the de for the diversion and dedicated it to the open space or your maintenance fund or whatever. Uh, a TNM did this in Middletown uh, a couple of years ago with the Conifer Project. Are you familiar with that? I know where the property is, but I was not involved in that project. Okay. Uh, I would suggest that that would be the best way to go. To, to you know, if you go the diversion, you go to the state house commission, and, and there's a given give, give, give and take there. Right here, the concern is taking it off the Rossi, and I and uh, I'll make my statement later. But but uh, thank you. Any other questions? Back. Uh, Anthony Hussey, uh, 16 Manning Street, Red Bank, Middle, Middle, Middle Town. Um, if uh, the parking lot adjacent to the Maple Cove lot gets separated from the Rossi, will any permits be sold to park in the parking lot? That uh, that hasn't been discussed. You get the it wouldn't be public then, would it? Oh, it could be public parking, and and I don't know, and I don't want to suggest anything because I don't want people to think that that's the plan. Prior use of that lot, which was factual, 
was permits were issued to library employees to park there. And then when we didn't have enough library employees, employees of property on the corner were issued permits. But that was probably a decade ago. Um, this council has authorized it to be used for public parking. And I don't, I don't, I can't foresee what the council will do, but I, there's been no discussion about making it permit only or anything like that. Well, even if, if, if a few permits are issued there, essentially that would restrict the use to, let's say, park people, people who want, not, not park people, people who wanted to access the water there. There'd be lots of people parking. Yeah, but the, the problem with, with doing permits for a few people, let's say you wanted to do half and half, hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Well, those half number of people aren't there all the time. What about other people? Correct. Oh, and absolutely. Then, so I, I, that hasn't even been discussed. There hasn't been no discussion about issuing permits or, or trying to restrict that parking. It was always to make it public parking. Mm -hmm. um, but you bring up some thoughts that maybe the council would consider, maybe not. I mean, restricting public, restrict, restricting permit parking would be an excellent step if it were to be taken off the roster. Restricting it in what way? Uh, not limiting not the number of permits? Per first come, first serve, where it gets there, it gets there. Well, I think that's the intent. Okay. Um, the, other, the other question is, um, do you have any, any information regarding how often people accessing the library use that parking space? No. If, if there could be, I mean, we know the situation there. It's way down the hill. I mean, if I, if I go to, uh, if I go and drop my kayak or even want to go to the park down, well, sorry again, Maple Cove down there, I would never think to park at the library because that's a hike. I don't want to do that. So I assume most people using the library are not taking the hike down to that parking lot to use the library. Yeah. I, I would agree. And my, my last, uh, my last eight more question. Uh, is that um, essentially, um, uh oh, I forgot. <laughs> um, Happened to me too. Yeah, it did. <laughs> um, <coughs> that um, the, uh, the use of Maple Cove has, has come after uh, the purchase of the property. I mean, since you purchased the property for library use. Um, you've created this access, and uh, my my question is: I mean, can you take that into consideration when you're when you're discussing the, per the intent of the purchase of the property? The, the intent of I think that, I think we have. I mean, we haven't restricted it to library parking. We could have just as easily paved it and said, okay, library employees only or library <coughs> use only. We didn't do that. The borough didn't do that. So I think the borough's record is is public parking. Okay. Anybody wants to use it? You did three permits, though, Stan. So, all right, well, uh, you did, but you changed it when you knew I found out. You did. I no, I didn't do any and permits. All the growers knew it. I didn't do any permits. Uh, Thank you. Uh, somebody, somebody else. Thomas. I know. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hi, good evening. I'm Jennifer Barons from 61 Open Street. If this were to stay on the Rossi and the parking were to theoretically be for the non-park open space, what are the policing requirements? I mean, would signage cover it and then we could enforce it the way they enforce residential parking on my street? Or would there have to actually be someone stationed there? And does it require that all of the parking is dedicated to this? Uh, the last part. All of the parking would have to be dedicated to that. Okay. The enforcement, they have said that not only do we have to put up signs restricting it, but we have to enforce it. Um, I would think the re residential program, we have the restriction in residences, but it's re enforced upon complaint because the people that normally ask for the residential parking restrictions are usually the ones that bear the fruits of the enforcement either through relatives or friends that come by. But it's, it's pretty so, much like loosey-goosey park at your own risk. Is, um, is, you're not using the intended. Is the intent the is to restrict it for two-hour parking so that residents can have people come and visit them. Um, but it's enforced when residents call to say somebody's been parked there all day. 
So um, I would imagine that enforcement, if we were required to enforce this, we would have to patrol it and enforce it. Maybe we would have to, uh, there's been some suggestions about permits or stickers. Maybe that's the way of going. Okay. Maybe. Are there codified, is there anything codified stating specifically no. what adequate enforcement is? No. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Are you ready? Who hasn't asked a question yet? Yes, of course. Hi, good evening. Boris Kaufman, 28 Riverside Avenue. Uh, question regarding parking lot, uh, parking lot, a lot four. Um, I didn't quite understand if there's a proposal to subdivide that or not. No. Okay. So we're going to lose all this land. So um, can you explain the reason, be the difference between the treatment of lots one and four? I can. A statement from the DEP in their letter of February 26, which Christine already read. Based on review of the information submitted by the borough, review of the information error files, the Acres program has determined that this situation appears to meet the bonafide error standard from Rossi amendments at NJAC, blah, blah. Um, and agrees with the borough that the listing of the entire lot one and the listing of lots four and 401 appear to be an error. So they, okay, if I heard it correctly, they're saying they're the same. Yeah, there's another sentence though. It says, as uh, such, the borough requests that Green Acres program allow uh, the borough to amend their Rossi to remove that portion of lot one that is not currently used for park purposes, as well as the entirety of lots four and four. And uh, yeah, I remember reading that. I didn't understand what their rationale was for that either. I think the ordinance that states that the purchase of lot four and 401 was for the use of the library purposes. <coughs> it wasn't that the reason for purchase of lot one as well? Lot one was purchased at the same time. In fact, if I remember correctly, we paid a lot of money for lot, well, a, a, a money amount, a dollar amount was listed for lots four and 401, and lot one and 101 were sort of thrown in. 25,000. 25,000 versus, yeah, so um, I, I think that's the reason the ordinance was specific. I think at the time we were, the, there was a derelict house, a vacant house on lot four and 401, and that was the target. But the bank owned both parcels, and that's how we ended up with both parcels, but all four parcels. But I guess I still don't understand why we're treating these two lots differently. I mean, they both have parking lots, which are used, you know, currently for the general public, and they have some green space, which is, you know, can be used for recreational purposes. So, why are we proposing different treatment of them? Well, we are. We're, we're proposing to remove one and four and 401. The only one we're treating differently is 101. I, I just want to clarify, 4.01 and 1.01 are remaining on the open space inventory. So, but they're underwater, and this is the only part. Excuse me. Oh, sorry. Okay, thanks. Lots one, there's a portion of it that's being used for recreation conservation purposes. Why the bottle recognizes that. Okay. So that's part of this concession is that the intent of removing the property from the Rossi is the need for the parking spaces, the parking lot itself. So the other portion of the property is not really being used for anything else. I mean subdividing the co the properties comes with a cost. There's a lot of green acre standards that you have to follow for setting monuments, etc. So. Okay, I'll reserve the rest for the comments next. In the back of the room. Hello, Judy Lutz, 114 Harding Road. Um, 
you had mentioned earlier about liability and insurance, and I was wondering, is there a set amount per year for insurance that's allocated to these areas for liability? No, not that I can put my hand on, no. We're, we're part of the joint insurance fund. It's a pool of insurance. We list all the properties. They come out, they inspect the properties, and they set our rates accordingly uh, based on loss experience among the members of the GIF. So I, I can't really say, you know, these dollars or this exposure is this or that. Is that, is that something that would be online for public view? No, not, not to my knowledge. Can we get it? I mean, I can ask, but uh, I, I don't think it's handled that way. It's, it's a, a lump sum liability for all of our properties. And they adjust, I don't know how the underwriters adjust it and come up with the formula. I don't think they issue a schedule, but I can ask. And then um, after the council hears this tape, is there gonna be another meeting where everybody is included that's not during the holidays? <laughs> well, you know, any action by the council will be done at a public meeting of the council. Um, I'm not sure. I think the, the minutes will be, or the uh, tape and or minutes will be distributed to the council. Um, I think the next step is to send it to the DEP. And then probably the follow-up step would be to meet with the DEP. And then we would come back with the results of that meeting and uh, meet with the council and uh, recommend to the council, uh, you know, convey the information that we receive and whatever the recommended course of action is. So this might be the only meeting on the matter as far as the public? No, there, there, again, there would be action by the council at a public meeting. So the agendas are published online. It would come up as an agenda item. I can assure you it will be on a an agenda in advance. Um, and there will be certainly a watchdog on the council to make sure that the public is informed of any pending action. Yeah. Stan, could I just Thank you. let the record reflect that I'm, I'm present here because everybody seems to think that there are no members of the governing body in attendance tonight? Yes, I think Councilman <laughs> Zippers is here. I, I saw Councilwoman Lee here before. I don't know of any other council people here. So I trust you Convey your colleagues. Uh, excuse me. I can't. I can't record statements from the audience. Oh. Questions? People haven't asked yet. Yes. Oh, give me the blue in the back. Slips. Andrew Furphy, 61 Atlantic Avenue, Aberdeen. Perfy, F U R P H one. Um, one designation I, I want to see. Could you reread the statement as far as the DEP stating area lot one o one point o one in the statement? Does DEP designate or list that lot as a park? They don't list any of them as a park. They list them as being on the open space, on the Rossi. In, in its designation, in the letters to Red Bank, was the classification that they... Boat launch facility. It's listed as boat launch facility, not park, and or open, open space. space. And open space. There's a few different ones. Could you please check to see whether the word park was used? Library parking lot park. Park. So the DEP has recognized this law as a park. You've seen Miracle of 34th Street. <laughs> no, I've never seen it. <laughs> I'm just a stickler for wording. <laughs> yes, in their, in their uh, reference, um, in their November 25th letter, they said, Burbank Bank County Mama, Maple Cove Open Space, Block 8, Lots 1, 101 and 102. Library parking lot, lot 8, lots 4 and 401. Uh, and then they include Marine Park, block 9, lots 5, 501, 502, 503, 504. And uh, in their meet reference uh, letter, February 26, 
says block eight lots one four and four oh one request for amendment of recreation and open space inventory and in the first paragraph it says uh, references block eight lot one as maple avenue boat launch and the listing block eight lots four and four oh one as library parking lot park park um, yeah, that's a, clearly an error no i don't think it's an error this is uh, this is official wording from the department of environmental protection a government agency you have to have seen Miracle of 30 <laughs> Never seen it. I'm just a stickler for words. I can clarify this um, as a letter. Well, he can as well. I just want, you know, for the record, the, uh, you know, the question being that the word park is referenced by the Department of Environmental Protection, and Red Bank has not acknowledged that this is a park. Well, they've also said that the removal of that property uh, meets the criteria for removal. And we agree with that. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Questions. Any other questions? We'll go second round. Oh, no hand. Okay. Stephen Heck, 135 Branch Avenue. I'm looking at the letter from February 26th, 2013. If in fact the DEP says that we have a bona fide inaccuracy with respect to the two issues, um, why not request that they make a summary judgment and just remove that material from the Rossi and we all go home and feel good about it? Because the DEP has told us we have to go through this process. There's different levels of errors that were made. So if an error is exactly a typographical error, say it was supposed to be lot 6 and it was lot 16 or something or the like, right. you can simply remove it and make that modification to fix the error and move on. This, uh, because it has been on the open space inventory for some time, requires a public hearing. In fact, the, okay. uh, right above that, uh, in that same letter, it says, since we've determined that the borough's Rossi amendment request has merit, the next step in the amendment process is for the borough to schedule and conduct a public hearing that complies with the requirements <coughs> of NJ 736.253H, enclosed. So, Within 60 days of conducting the hearing, the borough must submit the proofs of publication, hearing transcript, and response to comments and other information listed for our final review and approval. Well, everybody, everybody needs a job. I have, uh, <laughs> since you introduced the issue of typos, I just want to mention, uh, for the record, uh, the November 25th uh, letter uh, has two designations for the library parking lot. In the reference, uh, at the top of the page, uh, when it references the various uh, issues that uh, are in the body of the letter, it, it's, uh, it references library parking lot. And then in the body of the letter, it references library parking lot park. So, well, actually, in it the, may not be a park, that may be a type In the first of paragraph, it says library parking lot park, and in the second paragraph, it says library parking lot. Yeah, so there are several different designations yes. in, in that. That's, um, so we have to go through this process, even though they agree that there's a, uh, a bona fide uh, issue. Yes. Okay. Yes. But, Mr. Sickles, could you read the rest of that letter where it says the above information constitutes our preliminary determination on this request? and should not be construed by the borough as permission to remove any area from the Rossi. We reserve the right to deny the borough's request or to impose additional conditions on our final approval based on information presented at the public hearing or otherwise available to the department. So while they say well, the I, request has merit, it's still open to it says, consideration. And thank you for reading that into the record. But it says that we can't do anything different until we conduct the hearing exactly. and get their approval, right. which is exactly what we're doing. Uh, yes, new questions. Simple question. Blue Demento, nine else in the court. It sounds like 
when you go back to meet them and they give you your approval, it's a done deal. So I don't understand what the um, what, what the requirement for a resolution, the council to get together for more public hear or for a hearing at the council. It just seems like from what you've read, you're going to go back to them with all this stuff, and they're going to either say yay or nay. I'm, I'm echoing what the mayor has said in public, that this is just the hearing. We'll go back to them. We have to actually, I just read, we have to respond to comments. Um, 